What's up everybody? My name's Kevin Tobenberg. I've been restoring a Bridgeport mill. Today we're going to work on the table. The surface of this table is just terrible. It was all pitted and marred and and big old chunks drilled out of it. Just uh. Uh, but over the course of this video, we're going to make an insert to, to try to fill some of the holes. We're going to put some epoxy. We're going to try to make the surface look a lot smoother, make it look a lot nicer. And I think you're going to enjoy it. Now, you may notice that some of the footage is actually past. Uh, it actually, we did this before we even started doing the column and all that. But then also some of the other footage is going to be like a jumping forward in our timeline. So you're actually going to see the head already done which of course we've not covered yet we will in a future video but i thought it might be better to do it this way so we just kind of tell the story of the table from the beginning to end all right i hope you enjoy it if you do please give it a thumbs up and comment and uh i hope you enjoy i started cleaning up this mill the table has definitely been ridden hard and put away wet look at this I don't even know why or how people would do that. Crazy. Many tic tacs later. Some of the holes on this table I might be able to fill with some JB Weld or epoxy, like these. But this one actually went all the way through. You can see that down there. I'm going to use that to make sure that I don't go down too far. And then this hole was actually already drilled. This is at my attack gauge. So for a 5 16 18, I took the drills and actually it fit in there just perfectly. So I tapped it and I'm going to try putting a bolt down there. Now, one problem might be is that, I don't know if you can see, but the threads actually are a little bit visible through. I don't know if that's focusing. So I don't know whether that wall is going to blow out and then leave this thing loose. I'm gonna to try to put some uh, Loctite 401. I don't have any red Loctite. I think red Loctite, red Loctite is the better kind. Um, and then I'm gonna put that down in there and then make sure I don't go down too far. slides there now. All right, I'll let that cure. I'm gonna have to come back with an angle grinder and cut off that top. Let me show my plan for trying to patch this defect in the bed. I have taken just some, some brass pieces and I used some wooden shims underneath there to push up underneath the flat of this T-slot. I then got a piece of round metal that's uh, roughly the same size of the hole. And I put it in my drill press with a machinist vise and drilled a hole straight through it at an angle that seemed good to me. Then I used, again in the drill press, a end mill to cut out that flat area. And boy, did that make a lot of shaking and rattling. The drill press is not designed for milling. So my goal is now to get this in here at an angle, I mean, get this in here firmly fixed and then use this as a jig to drill and tap a hole. And then I'm gonna run this bolt all the way through. I think I'm actually gonna use this style instead, depending on if I can get the Allen wrench in there. And then I've gotta get it in there and get it buried deep enough that I can then take the top off and take this side off and have it be fastened. And I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but it's the only solution I can come up with, so wish me well. Got it wedged in there with these wooden pieces, and it's the right height where that's firm down on that back shoulder. And now I'm gonna try drilling a hole and tapping in there. This thing is vibrating.
kind of want to save this powdery stuff because I want to mix it with epoxy when I'm making my filler. But I'm not quite sure how to get that picked up. Maybe a lost cause. Maybe I'll just sweep it out and get it out later. Got my hole there. That's a good distance, so now I'm gonna tap that. Okay, so it's tight, but let's just think about what's gonna have to happen. Number one, it's gonna have to be brought down flush with this, and number two, this is all, this part in here is gonna have to be taken off. So that means this entire head needs to be down in there, needs to be below the surface of this and inside that. Now, once I get that done, it's gonna have like a big hole in the top, so I'm not sure how much benefit I'm gonna get from this, but this is what someone recommended on one of the forums. There we go, much nicer. I'm debating whether to, to put epoxy in these things now, or I'm planning on redoing the surface. And I think probably it's possible if I am do put that, that the milling will dislodge the epoxy. So I think maybe I should do that afterwards. Several months later, Next step is to work on getting this table mounted, the table which is uh, disguised as the surface of the moon. Ugly, ugly, but it's what I've got. So I'm going to get the uh, table on there, flip it over, put some uh, flaking on the, the bearing surfaces. All right, I'm gonna get my, my table up onto my workbench so I can uh, try to flake it in. Let's lift her up. not fastened down and you can see it's got almost like a 12 inch overhang so if the weight were to be put on the, that overhang it could just flip over so I have to make sure I get it in a ways This dovetail here is very smooth, and to me it doesn't look like it ever had any flaking. I'm gonna add some flaking just because I'm not super confident on the flaking of this. Uh, I'm not able to make real deep uh, gouges. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but that power story for I does just seems to do lots of little superficial scratches. So I'm just gonna flake this a little bit. So I've got this dovetail flaked. I'm now gonna flake these two surfaces. I don't even really know if these are bearing surfaces. Actually, I think they are. Yeah, they're bearing surfaces. So I'll flake both of these and then I'll flip it over and get this. So to get way down into the, into the base, I have to use this hand one, but I'm at least get the outer part uh, with the power scraper.
not light shining, you can really see where the scrape marks were. Kim, the purpose of this is to retain oil. I would love to have it be for making it flat, but I don't have the tools for that, so we'll do the second best. It's probably very foolish of me, but I'm taking a belt sander and just going evenly in even patterns over to just try to take some of the superficial scrapes off. I may regret this later. Here's my outcome. I'm gonna have to wait till I get the table back onto the mill and start doing some testing to see whether I made it all rippled. I tried to go evenly, but you never know. One thing I think that's interesting, look at all that little honeycomb pattern and it's all over everywhere. And I think that that's all the little um, cells or but in cast iron, you know, you have all those granules, maybe it's called. And I'm wondering, I don't have, I actually don't know what the size of those granules are, but I'm not sure what else would be causing that pattern. It feels nice and smooth. I started with real coarse grit, finished with a very fine grit. And then I came over it with Scotch-Brite on an orbital sander. It feels nice and smooth. And I went in at an angle to get each of these beveled. I may do something more. You know, I still have this big hole here. This was a huge one. I still need to come back with a, a T-slot cutter because the, this piece extends below down. In other words, I can feel a lip there. So I'll need to come underneath that. And then I thought maybe about filling the, the rest in there with epoxy. I've done epoxy before and it works for a little while and then falls out. You know, maybe if I drilled a hole in there, it would give something for the epoxy to go into so it doesn't shear off. Anyway, some things to think about. I wasn't able to get that out. I would have to take the whole thing down farther and I decided that that's probably gonna be underneath the vise. I think the next step is to get that uh, table back on to the mill. Let's see if we can get the table on. down so it'll hook into the screw now to find the screw. I don't recall there being a shim behind this gear, but we'll see. Okay, that's obviously just in there a little bit loose. Now, Let's um, get our lead screw in. These are not the same left versus right. And I don't know which go, way goes which. I guess I'm gonna put it in and then we may have to change it. Okay, so like I did with the other one, pull it in to engage that first nut Pull back, then advance, or then screw it in. All right, the difference I can see between these two is that journal on this side 
like 540 thousandths. And this side, it's like one inch. So I bet I have it in backwards because I bet you the longer one is supposed to be on the other side. All right, that thing being loose was making me nervous. So at least I, I've got it locked in there. All right, I'm gonna uh, think here a little bit about which side is which and I'll be back. Much, much, much later. As is tradition, I'm gonna show some first chips. This is a little piece that I made to fit into the table to take out one of those half moons. And it's protruding down below and in interfering with the T-slot. Just looking at it, because there's no way to measure, it looks like 50, 60 thousandths. So I'm gonna try to just take the top off that and then I'll have to take it off, put it in, and just keep doing it until it's not interfering with it. The bottom of the piece interfering with the top of the T-slot. So this was one of the larger craters uh, that came on this vise. Um, so I uh, made a piece of round stock. I've made a big crater into a smaller crater um, because there's still a, a hole for where that thing is. But I'm gonna come back and try to fill this part with epoxy and this part up in here. But when I go like this, it still catches right there. And from what I can look, 50 thousandths, 30 thousandths. Anyway, that's how much I need to take more off the bottom. By measuring, that gives 536. So I think I'm gonna take another 10 thousandths off Maybe 15, I take 15 off, because it doesn't matter if it's a little bit elevated, I think. I just want to be able to pass a T-nut. I did a couple cycles, uh, 20 thousandths each cut. And now, now it does still protrude out into the slot a little bit this way, and I'm gonna mill that uh, separately. And I think I got that bottom part done. Good, all right. Okay. These, uh, the, the undersurface of these T-slots are generally dirty. I, I've tried going back and forth and cleaning them. I mean, they were really dirty when it started. But sometimes there's still a little bit of stickiness. But it feels to me like it's going right past that. So, I think we're good. All right, this next one makes me very anxious. But I've already done it with one of the smaller holes and it worked out pretty well. I'm going to drill <clears throat> that deeper, tap it, put a bolt in, Loctite it, and mill the top. I hope I'm not screwing things up. Okay, using the measurement uh, on the quill, I made that one inch deep, which is the same depth from the top here to the base of the T-slot. So, um, you know, I didn't wanna make sure I wasn't going through the table and had features underneath, but we should be in good meat there. So now I'm gonna tap that. Okay, I've got my bolt here. I got some Loctite 401. I saw a table once with all the different kinds of Loctite, and I know that I see people use Loctite red for something you never want to come out. I don't have that. And uh, what I could find online said that this is a good general purpose. I had it work quick here. I see this Loctite bubbling. Bubbling up, maybe air bubbles. I bet that's air bubbles getting squeezed out from the bottom. Uh, I don't think that's going anywhere. All right, get the excess wiped off. All right, I'm gonna give that some time to dry. All right, I'm ready to try to mill the top off this. Let's see how it goes. I thought I pressed record, but I apparently missed it. This was cutting real well but it has stopped cutting. So let me try a different cutter, see if I can get it going a little bit better. Okay, I got the um, another cutter here. I'm gonna try to take shallower cuts. Uh, 
I think that bolt must be hardened steel because the other end of this cutter stopped cutting good as well. I've got a carbide bit here. Um, it's broken on the sides, but I think the bottom from right I can feel still has sharp teeth. So I'm gonna try this. Uh, hopefully the carbide will cut that hardened bolt. Going back and forth and I was just doing it 1 thousandths at a time. I tried to tram the um, the knot of this head. I used, I used one of these and I had, a, I had another indicator right here. I got it close, but you can see I'm starting to get a little bit of a drag just on the front end. And so I think that front end is, is touching a little bit more than the back end. I can just barely keep, catch my fingernail on that back side. This side is smooth. Um, I think I'm gonna stop there. I may file it uh, a little bit um, to flatten out that backside. Uh, I don't wanna try to retram this and then come back and try to get just that fine bit. I, I just don't think I can be, I don't think I can be that accurate. I can feel this file biting in on that end and I can see it shining up, so. And I'm starting to pick up on the rest of it. So I think that looks good. Let me show you. See that you can see where the file picked up on the back side, but I can't feel anything there now. All right, I'm gonna take some emery cloth. I mean, not some emery cloth, probably some scotch Bright, and see if I can just get out some of those scuff marks. Now we may disagree on whether that was a good idea or not, whether it plays any functional role, but I do think it looks better. I can just barely feel the edge there with my fingertip, but I think it's okay. All right, that's how that's done. I was trying to figure out why my the knot of my head was not straight. In other words, why it was cutting more on the front side. Just looking at it, I can tell it's not level. I mean, it's not perpendicular. So I have this little uh, square here. You can clearly see. I think maybe when I have those two meters, I think if one was a hundred thousandths different than the other, then it would look like they were the same. So anyway, I'm going to try to do it again. All right, I've got it trammed in again. I think it's right this time. I'm not 100% sure about the variability of this of this uh, mill table. So I decided to put this um, surface block on here. And you put these in and then you take one point and you set this one to zero. And then you flip the other one around to that same point. You make that zero so that they're even, and then you look at it and then you, you adjust it until you get this axis and then the other axis. And so if you look, they're both on zero there. And when I spin it around, there's no movement on the dial. So if it was, I, you know, before I think it was off by a full rotation. And if I had gone back and forth between the two, I would have noticed, but I, I didn't, I just did them separately but I think that's good now. I wanna show this, I think it's cool. I have been saving some of the grinding dust when I would just do some various grinding and I thought I would try putting it inside some epoxy and then, you know, to kind of get, make it look more metallic, but it, got, it has a lot of dirt and debris in it. So I put this magnet underneath here and of course you can see it makes it all stand up and stuff, but I can then like bang it and a little puddle will come out that looks kind of rusty and I guess rusty iron oxide maybe is as magnetic. So it still looks a little dirty. There's still kind of some debris in there, but I've been getting quite a bit out. I just, I move the magnet around and keep bopping it and I think it's kind of cool. It's way as cleaning up the, those iron filings. So I have this two-part epoxy, which is calling itself steel weld, which of course it's not. And I've got that mixed up. It had a gray color and now I'm trying to mix in some of this shavings. I've never done this before, so I don't know how it's going to look or how it's going to work. I'm assuming that there's some level where it's just too much. That looks fairly saturated to me. All right, now I'm going to go try putting it on the table. So I set up some paint sticks as like a little dam. And let's see what we can do here.
So far, I'm ambivalent. I didn't make a dam on this one. Let's see what, how it turns out without one. Not so hot. I'm gonna just pull that off. Okay. Got a bunch extra here. I don't really expect this to stick, but I'm just gonna put it in there anyway. Yeah, so it's just, I think maybe I need more epoxy and less. Uh, I think it's already setting up. Yeah, I think if I'm gonna do this again, I would have a, a slower dry time. This is like already really tacky. Give that a little bit of a chance to dry. I've gone a couple of rounds. I decided I would just try, I had some extra, I would put it over on this area as well. Um, I took out the dams the wooden pieces and already these little half moons kind of started separating. I tried putting some super glue behind them, but I don't expect that one or this one to really stick. So I'm going to let that dry, um, come back and try sanding the top and we'll see. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's going to hold very well, but we'll try. Use this mill to take off the rough side of the epoxy that sticks out into this space. Just gonna come all the way along here and so that my uh, tea nuts and everything will be able to slide through there evenly. And I'm gonna use Klein milling on this. Okay, there, I've just touched off at a place where it's metal. So now, should cut off any epoxy. You can hear it cutting a little bit. Advanced it just a little bit. Uh oh, I just heard a click that makes me sound like something came loose. I thought once I'd gone over it, I could go back with conventional milling, which is going to tend to lift this stuff up off. Let me see what I've got. No, I don't feel anything loose. I'm gonna do that a little bit more. Okay, so I got a T-nut. It slides easily all those places that I've done. But I've not done this one yet. And see how it catches right there? All right, so I'm gonna do that off camera. And then we are done with that part. All right, next I have this, which I think is probably a uh, maybe a Woodruff key slot cutter, but I'm gonna use it to get underneath that ledge and to clean up any uh, epoxy that might be uh, up underneath there. Okay, this is the part that I've been the most concerned about because that's where I put that metal insert to fill that largest hole. But I just passed a T-nut and it's already passing, so I don't know. Maybe it wasn't needed. Well, that's good. All right. Okay, I think this table is about as good as I'm gonna be able to get it. My T-nuts go all on every slot. Got all the holes filled, a lot better than it was at the beginning. I've not gone across and checked for flatness, and maybe at some point I'll do that, but this table already is flopping around because it's, you know, it's, it's got wear in it, is what I'm saying, because it's got wear. Maybe someday I'll check it. 12 seconds later. Okay, I decided to check it now after all. That's a tense indicator. It is in contact with the table. I've zeroed it out. They were getting about one thou down. I think that may have to do more with the table sagging. No, I can't move it. That's about as much travel as I've got there. So I'm gonna zero it up again. Yeah, this is why I'm not sure that, like even when I turn down on the on the knee, the knee is a little sticky. See, I'm turning, turning, and nothing's happened. There it goes. Ah. 
That's about as much travel as I got on that side. All right, so it looks like I've got plus one and a half. Let's zero that again. So there I'm off by one and a half, two, three and a half, five, So it looks like it's five thousandths off, and let's see, I'm gonna bring the table up. Yeah, so I, I think if I brought it up here, so I think that means that's five thousandths low, right where the right where the vice goes. So I'll just have to keep that in mind. I just did it again on this next row, and I got as down as far as ten thousandths right in this area. All right, so now I'm gonna do this one. So it looks like I got two there, two and a half, three and a half, four, four and a half to five on this thing, which there really shouldn't be as much wear here. So I don't know what, how much of that is table sagging. All right, let's go back and do, let's do the far one. All right, let's zero that. Get a workout working this arms here. One and a half, two, three, three and a half, three, two, and that's about as much as I've got. Okay, so maybe 10 here, five in here. You know, I'm gonna have a vise that goes across to all of these. Maybe that will uh, somehow average that out a little bit. Cross my fingers. Okay, I'm gonna cut it off there. I think the table looks a whole lot better. You know, to go from that, that rough surface to now being smooth, relatively flat, I guess that middle part was down as much as 10 thousandths, but I think for an old mill, that's pretty good. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs up and a comment. Thanks, and come back for next time. Peace out.